Kia ora! Hello! Welcome to the latest video by Popola Urbanum, How to Weave a Medieval Paternoster, Part 6 of the series, Medieval Sewing Made Easy. Today I wanted to do a video where people could use items they might already have at home, perhaps picking up a new skill. We'll be making a tubular tablet woven braid, which had many other uses in the Middle Ages, such as arming laces and purse strings. I'll be demonstrating with the most historically accurate tools that I have at hand, but you can get similar results with tools made from familiar household items, and I'll show you these in the video. I'll be using the backstrap weaving technique, and this is probably the most accessible for most people. This one will be based on two extant paternosters and extant woolen braid I was able to find from the Museum of London and the Salzburg Cathedral Museum. Here is a description of the woolen braid in the book Textiles and Clothing, referenced below, which you can see uses very fine worsted woolen yarn. I went through my stash and selected some of the best yarns that I had that might lend themselves to this job. Here's what I came up with. Some of the colours are better than others. Some are too thick. Some colours are unsuitable for a paternoster of wood because the dye stuff needed to attain that colour would have been too expensive. For example, the maroon, which would have been from kermes or grain. All of the yarns are too fuzzy and none of them are worsted, but I need to work with what I have, so I selected some dark gold yarn that was reasonably thin. My first job was to check whether the yarn I selected was too thick for the job, so referring back to the text, I figure out the number of tablets used in the extant piece and therefore the number of warp yarns. Warp yarns are the ones that run all along the length of the braid. If I didn't know the number of tablets in the braid but had an, just an image of the piece, then I could guess the number of tablets um, using this method. So I calculate that I need 12 warp yarns, and so then I go ahead and wrap 12 yarns around my fingers and twist them into a little rope to give myself some kind of an idea of how thick my final braid needs to be, or how it will be using this yarn, I should say. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I have 12 there on my fingers. I just take that off, twist it into a little rope, as I said before. and just lay it next to the extant piece and just compare them. You can see it's a little bit fuzzy because it's not a worsted yarn, but all in all, it's not too bad. On to weaving tools. Whoops, no. My next job is to select my beads. The original Paternoster has 24 beads with a 10 millimeter diameter and two beads with a diameter of 12 millimeters. Finally, a finial bead with a diameter of 15 millimeters. I don't have a 15 millimeter bead, so I'm going to substitute with a 12 millimeter bead instead. On to weaving tools. These are the tools I use in living history displays. A 14th century reproduction leather belt, which is great for holding the warp yarns steadily. Um, that was made for me and it uses um, and historical uh, reproduction buckle. I have my new pack of oak wood tablets, which are rather lovely. Um, those were also bought for me. Ideally, these are not plywood, but are cut straight off the block, which is the historical uh, way of producing them. Uh, we have a wooden shuttle uh, upon which you wind your weft yarn. I'll now show you some household items from which you can make the equivalent weaving tools that I just showed you. We have one modern belt, just a leather belt, they're better for holding uh, tablet weaving. One pack of playing cards with which to make your tablets. You could use other sources of cardboard, that's fine. And we also have for the shuttle, one toilet roll core. <laughs> Should have a few of those around at the moment. And here is my medieval weaving set up using these tools. So there's my belt, my tablets made from playing cards and my shuttle made from a toilet roll core. 
Uh, I've been weaving a late 14th century silk fillet at home using these tools. Um, I like to keep my historical tools available for events. So you can just see the silk braid there. Here's a little gadget I have for setting up the warp yarns. I don't have any historical record for this equipment, but it is very convenient for home. You could just as easily use any two fixed points to warp up or a 14th century or Viking age tablet weaving loom if you have it. I'm using six whole tablets today, but I'm using them as if they were a four whole tablet, just like these playing card ones. Skipping ahead and I've completed my continuous warp. I will link to a great video about that in the description because mine looked like a mess. You need to make sure you have enough warp yarn for the length of your paternoster plus approximately 50 centimeters or so. My tablets are all threaded in the same direction because this is specified in the text. Learn more about tablet weaving threading direction from links in the description. Now we will remove the warp and attach it to the weaving space. In other words, between the belt and one other fixed point. If you're using a tablet weaving loom, you can skip this step. And we're in. I attach my shuttle with the weft to my belt and I'm ready to go. For this braid, we're not passing the shuttle through the work in a back and forward motion as in regular weaving. We're going through the weaving in one direction only. That means we pass the shuttle through the shed or gap in the weaving and then underneath the whole braid before turning the cards and beginning again. And that forms one unit of weaving or one pick. We're also turning our cards in one direction the whole time for ease of understanding as indicated. We're making quarter turns with the cards each time or turns of 90 degrees. So as I said before, one pick is a unit of weaving and that consists of one quarter turn of the cards in that direction. As you see, I beat the warp, I pass the shuttle through the weaving from right to left Just making sure that the weft is pulled nice and taut like that. I beat again if I need to. At this point, I should be passing the shuttle underneath the whole lot of the warp before I turn again, but that's okay. As long as you get the shuttle through and then you turn and then the shuttle goes through. So here we go. It goes under the work and then through from right to left, always going from right to left through the work and then underneath with a turn of the cards in between each passing of the shuttle through the work. And always turning the cards in the same direction. Now remember to leave a gap at the beginning of the work near your belt. This will become part of your tassel. So just make sure you make that long enough. I've put a little playing card there just to leave that gap free. There it is, that gap. And the work's starting to form up in front of it now that I've done a few picks. Now you can see where we've done a little bit of work, about 15 minutes or more of weaving and it's beginning to form a round braid. As expected, it starts to form a bit of a spiral as well in, as in the historical examples. Because the yarn isn't worsted, it's unfortunately a bit fuzzy, but no yarns have snapped yet, so it should be okay. Sometimes the fuzziness of the yarns and the low twist of the yarns can tend to make the yarns prone to snapping, so, but, um, we're doing fine, so it's great. Now the weaving is about one third of the way through and there's enough twist build up in the back of the weaving, uh, the opposite side of the cards, uh, to make it difficult to turn the cards. So I'm gonna solve that problem by flipping all of the cards. There are other ways to deal with twist, but this way suits the particular project I'm doing today. So I'm just flipping them. And I'm going to continue, once I've flipped them, I continue to turn the cards in the same direction as before. There we go. Quarter turn before I continue to weave. 
Finally, I reach the end of the braid with the required length for my pattern or star, 28 centimeters. Awesome. Yes, I compare it to the extant example. It looks pretty good. I feel very happy with myself. Everything's going great. Now it's time to free the tablets from the warp yarns and also cut off the shuttle. Don't forget to leave some nice long tails uh, for the tassels at each end. Here's my leftover yarn, which I'm going to use to make the tassel for the finished paternoster. So it's a loop paternoster, and so there'll just be one tassel unlike the previous ones I've made, and it'll just sit on the end there like that. Now to thread the beads onto the braid and finish it off. I put the first bead on and secure it with a temporary knot before putting the rest on with a little tricky method that I'll show you now. So I've already uh, got the threads, the beads threaded onto a thin thread, um, and you can use a needle to do this if that's easier for you. Uh, you loop the two strands together as shown and just like that and then you slide the beads from the thin thread onto the tablet woven braid. Um, if they don't all go together then you can just do them one by one and it goes very quickly which is great. I finish off by adding the last beads and you can use a bone awl if you need to, just like this one, which we'll be giving away next week. Voila. Now, I use the same method as above to get the two tails through the last bead. A needle threader or a piece of wire would work, but I've used a piece of wax linen, so I just put it through that last bead. Um, I sp so it's a loop. I split the loop like that. I put the other tail through that loop, and then I just pull the tail through that last bead, just like that. Okay, all the beads are on now, and... That's looking good. I have enough room left for a medieval person's fingers to get between the beads and pass them along as they recite prayers. Now it's time to put on the tassel. I thought I'd use a contrast thread as found in the extant piece from Salzburg Cathedral Museum. I decided on a pink that was similar in color to a matted discharge dye. Um, I had two other pinks, uh, which are in the corner there uh, of the screen, but I decided on the other. So I choose a large needle, I thread up with this yarn, and I secure the two ends of the braid together, as I'm showing you. There we go. You want it to be a nice, secure join, so pass your needle through several times. You don't really need to knot off. Uh, as we've shown you in the other videos, just pass it through looping that yarn around. I add in the extra pieces of wool yarn and secure them with the pink thread as shown. There we go. The next step is to pull all the tassel threads together and wind the pink yarn around them in a coil. First of all, I just stitch them on, tie a knot, there we go, they're all lying flat, just tying a knot around the whole lot, so they're all together in a bundle, and now comes time to do the coil, here we go. Just wrapping around several times so it looks attractive. 
after that's completed, simply knot off the ends of the pink thread. I like to do that through the coil first that you just created, and then I take it through under the bulk of the tassel and knot off there again before trimming the ends of the pink thread. Please see our previous sewing videos for tips on how to knot off a sewing thread if you need to. So I've cut the needle off and I'm just knotting the pink thread for the second time and then I trim off the excess because I don't want that contrast pink thread in my tassel. Now that's all that's left is to neaten and trim the ends. So I was left with a few ends that were a bit too short so I just removed them entirely because I'm confident I've secured my tassel really well. Then I'm just trimming up the ends of the tassel so they're nice and even. Do the first trim and then just a second one just to get any stragglers. So there you have it, one looped paternoster of wooden beads with a wool tablet woven braid. The braid should be nice and strong now and would likely be even stronger if you used a silk or linen thread. Let me know how you went with this project in the comments below. If you want to be in the draw to win some the bone awls that I used in the video, comment on last week's video, Life in the Medieval City, Crime and Punishment. It will be drawn on the 5th of April. Tune in then to find out the winner. Entries close on the 1st of April. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. I guess that means you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and remember to like, comment and subscribe. And also stay safe, have fun and keep reenacting. Je vivrai tout